out of the north he came with a finished career, a broken heart, and a cat named Earl. Destiny was leading him to TV 32, where somehow he knew they would give him a job. Don't you be missing Saturday Night Wrestling on TV 32. It's hosted by me, Arch Mess the Untouchable. And aside from having the finest in professional wrestling, we also have a little fun along these lines. This is Arch Mess, and i just like to say, go ahead, change the channel. Make my day. Everybody likes Earl. He's the pet of the future. No muss, no fuss, no little Tootsie Rolls in the carpet. <laughs> Captain, the creature has captured the ship. Oh, good day in there, you little Star Trek guys. You guys are really lost. What are you doing here? Hey, this is old Arch Mess, and you're in the TV32 studios, and you're right in the middle of Saturday Night Wrestling. Come over here. I want you to meet somebody. That's Earl the Dead Cat, my little buddy. Check him out there in your little view screen. So how's it going, huh? What are you doing here? I bet you took the wrong turn at Croc. Most people don't realize it, but it's just west of East Croc, you know? The strangest things happen in TV land, don't they, home audience? Earl, you want to leave that starship alone over there? Hey, Earl, come on. Earl, be serious now. You're risking matter, antimatter, implosion. I want you to settle down, Earl. Get off of that thing. It disturbs me greatly that this Matt Dreamer is destroying your image that you have worked so hard to create by saying that your stench makes everyone wear a gas mask. This is not true at all. What they really are smelling is the Bowler High School. And I want you all out there to be on the lookout for those exploding bricks. They could fall into the wrong hands. Ah! <coughs> I think I injured myself when I came in off the top rope there. I, I thought my nose was bleeding, but it's not. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke out there. Laugh. <laughs> Killer Theater, starring Ned the Dead, Dr. Moreau, Legend has it, 1959's House on Haunted Hill did such big box office, it inspired Alfred Hitchcock to make a low-budget horror movie of his own. Ever hear of Psycho? This is the first of two films starring Vincent Price, made the same year by director William Castle. William Castle, also the inventor of Emerjo. What's Emerjo? During the scene with the walking skeleton, in some theaters, Castle had a skeleton on a wire fly over the audience, as if it had emerged from the screen. Get it? In that other Vincent Price movie, The Tingler, Castle had some theater seats wired to give random moviegoers electric shocks. House on Haunted Hill also features lovely Carolyn Craig, one of the silver screen's greatest screamers. <laughs> and Richard Long, TV brother of Lee Majors and Linda Evans in the Big Valley. And gorgeous Carol Omart, who had also been Miss Utah of 1946. And Julie Mitchum, sister of actor Robert Mitchum, who also appeared in big screen classics, The Ten Commandments and The High and the Mighty. You've been Lord. Ned? Hey, watch out for that dog crap. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> No wonder that thing is killing people. The soundtrack is making it crazy. Hey everybody, it's Chiller Theater. Come on in, Doc. Doc with his tricorder. Huh. 
I am detecting traces of moldering meat frisbees. <laughs> Whatever is, that is. There is weak old meat frisbee smells <laughs> in here. I'll tell you what, we abandoned the meat frisbees for this week because we found, you know, the meat frisbees are a lot of fun. If you were here last week, we were playing meat frisbee. It's kind of our new deal. It's a combination of a picnic and the games that one plays at a picnic. But what happened was, is that the meat frisbee and the sun just don't mix, if you know what I'm saying. Hey, where did you get the tricorder? How long ago did you get the tricorder? Been a while now. I bet it has. Like, uh, it's, a, it's actually handmade. It's it, it's unique. And it's uh, really? It's yes. so this, that, it is really. A, I bet a you. fan at another station, by the way. Were you very, one very the, pleased to receive one that? Of our, one of our local area TV meteorologists it's bestowed this upon me. Really? And that person was sweet. up. And how did they get the, to make it the right noises? I don't know. I tell you what, that's uh, it's crazy. The fact that you have stuff like that and are a grown man, that I know. That is as, as funny as you think it is, I too think it's funny, but in a slightly different way. See, but that's why Doc yeah. and I, well, no, that's why you and I There's get along. There's all kinds good. of funny. That's, that's exactly right, which he thinks my funny is funny in that way too. So it works out perfectly. He huh? thinks I'm a little Wait. dorky, I think you're a little dorky, and yet together we're a lot dorky it's, and it seems to play. It's like the Oscars. All right, let's go enjoy. <laughs> okay. Molecular and atmospheric dispersion and those footprints indicate that she went off in this direction. Shields up. Why? Oh, red alert. Every day, Hugh Marriott wakes up to the same boring face, eats the same boring breakfast with his family, and goes to work at his boring job with his boring pain-in-the-butt boss. So how should he fight this terrible problem? Dr. Moreau's Happy Pills. Easy down the street tries to drink her boredom away. One look off at a time. Mr. Bartowski tries to spice up his life with loose women, but he's a dirty old man. <laughs> and Hugh, well, he's a family man. That's why I recommend Dr. Moreau's Three Steps to Fighting Boredom. Step one, a night out with the boys. Yeah, I know these guys are losers, but it gets better. Step two, a little boom chicka boom at the old bamboo room. It ain't cheating if there's no touching. And finally, step three, Dr. Moreau's Happy Pills. They'll have you singing a song and skipping along in no time. All well, what's a rainy day? Never mind that cloud, behind that cloud you'll find a golden rain. All well, laugh your fears away. See the light ahead, right ahead, there's a moon with night ahead. Dr. Moreau's Happy Pills. John. Yes, Mary. John, what's happening to us? I think we both know, Mary. It's just that, that we don't have... Dr. Moreau's Happy Pills. Exactly. There's this awful gap in our lives just because we don't have... Dr. Moreau's Happy Pills. With all our technology and industrial know-how, we still don't have the one thing that could give us a better way of life. Dr. Moreau's Happy Pills, available at Frank's Hardware. Happy holidays from Earl and Archmash the Untouchable. Hello, kids. Uh, it's with a heavy heart that I am on camera with you today. Um, obviously, Doc Moreau, Randy Moreau, uh, passed away this last week. And, um, you know, for me, there's just so many things about Randy that were unusual and interesting and spectacular. Um, first of all, he was a gentle giant and maybe he wasn't that much of a giant, but I'm so damn little. And he just was a gentle soul and a very nerdy, interesting guy. Keep in mind, when I met Randy, I was doing chiller theater and I was near the end of the line. I was 
just not doing a good job and I was mailing it in and he happened to work at channel 632 at the time and channel 2632 at the time well he would show up and he would give me like tips on things that related to the movie because I think internally he was miffed that I seemingly didn't care about what the actual movie was which sadly was true so he started to give me these tips and tips and tips and I would utilize them to whatever limited extent I could and then finally I said dude why don't you just come on right and then we'll do this well he shows up the first day as Doc Moreau and this is like just we're just doing it a one-time thing, which of course from that point forward became a many-time thing. But he shows up with the goofy white hair thing and the coat and the all his collection of ridiculous, like the monkey bladder and the stuff that he had. And what he also showed up with was a tremendous zeal for doing that. He loved those movies. He loved that. And he had a long history of being on television uh, when he was arch mess during the wrestling days. And throughout, he is a TV guy. And so uh, I certainly related to him in that sense. Overall, he is so smart. He was so fun and funny and interesting and he had this great funky sense of humor that would come out in all those things and he kicked he pulled me kicking and screaming to do those things because i was burnt on ned and he he loved it right so it made me happy to do it the thing that i regret is that i don't think i lived up to what randy wanted the show to be and that's all on me and all I can say about Randy Moreau is that he was a sweet man, a fun, funky, interesting man who lived through television like I did. And for those of us who've been in TV, in that sense, working for TV stations, it's, it's like a cult. You know, once you do it, it's a badge of dishonor or honor or however you want to look at it. So all I want to say is that... Uh, I love you, Randy. I apologize for being a rotten uh, co-host. And the show should have been Doc Moreau's Cheller Theater for the last however many years, for sure. Because I mailed it in and he did not. And I look at that sadly. But what a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Or what? <laughs>